What's going on everybody? Gunner here and today I just want to do a quick run through of the new Slow Jig Clouser. Uh, really simple variation, basically just combining a few bugs on a lead-eyed, you know, Clouser style platform. Um, and I'll try to save all of my long-winded talking for the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you want to see a video of this fly swimming, fishing, catching some bass, um, I'll have a link first thing in the description to a, a little episode I did fly fishing, wade fishing for bass, um, and it's got some tips on there on how to be a little bit more productive wade fishing and basically keep your fly wet. So go check that out and then come back and watch this if you want or do vice versa. Um, but we'll zoom in here and get started. So I'm coming in with an A-Rex NS110 streamer hook in a size 2. And I'm going to start with, oh, what is this? I forget, 140 Vivas Power Thread. That's what I'm using. And I'm just going to dress that. Do what you got to do here. Drop that back, you know, basically to my, my point. It has an exaggerated little bend back here, so I don't go all the way back to the barb. Um, but get some good thread turns on there. Then I'm going to come up and actually put my lead eyes on. These are small painted lead eyes. Uh, we're doing chartreuse. We're going to do the color combo from the video which I usually don't do, but we're going to keep it uh, to the one that caught the fish because I know you guys will like that. And I'm pretty particular about where these sit on here, so forgive me for messing with that. But I'm just going to hit that with a bunch of figure fours. That's what I call doing a figure eight, but only doing it on one side. So you're doing a figure eight, but only on one side. Make sure these are perfectly center happy with those guys and then the secret for lead eyes is these underlocking wraps over the eye but underneath the shank over the eye but underneath the shank that's going to help put pressure on all those figure fours and really lock that in place and then we'll touch that with some super glue here before the end of it now I'm going to come in and tie bucktail in. And uh, you can do a whole bunch of stuff for tailing materials. You could do marabou, craft fur, arctic fox, you could even do a rabbit zonker wing. Um, but what I love about bucktail is it's, it, it actually moves really good when it's wet and it rarely fouls, if never, when casting. So I'm able to just keep hunting, 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 and I'm never taking my fly in to fix a fouling issue. Now a lot of those things that I mentioned, they'll actually fish good when fouled, like especially marabou if that wraps around, like you still have a pretty decent tail. Um, but aside from all that, bucktail is also really durable, it's really easy to source, uh, and it's obviously, well I guess all of them are pretty inexpensive, but um, I just like bucktail. I think keep it simple, and it's a one step uh, fly that way. A lot of those other materials, if you do choose to use them, which you're free to do so, um, a lot of times you'll have to come in and, and kind of structure that with something so it doesn't wrap, which is just adding more time behind the vise and less time. Uh, tying more patterns or fishing. So coming in with bucktail, um, you can see this is a little bit long. I cut it off the tip. Uh, when you get up towards the tip, you got a lot less trapped air in here. And the whole point of this tail is actually not to flare. Um, so I went up to the tip. I'm going to measure that back one, two. So you got one, two hook shanks off here. And that's going to give us a nice long body. And something I did, because I'm using 140 power thread, as I spun it, and the whole thing about spinning it is uh, you're going to put a whole bunch of pressure on this thread, and if the thread's round, you're basically, uh, you have a lot more force, a lot more pressure, and the thread's a lot more durable. The moment that thread actually spreads out and is flat, now you have all these weak individual strands you can't put as much pressure on without a breaking. So give that a nice little quick spin. Uh, give that two loose wraps right on top, and I'm going to keep that on top. And tie this down with a boatload of pressure. Now when I get to the back, like that can't ever pull out, that's going nowhere. I'm actually going to lighten my load on my thread here and get some nice flat wraps right on top, which is going to collapse all that bucktail, keep it perfectly straight and looking wonderful. So that's our tail. Um, you can come in with any flash you like, uh, but something that I've been playing with a lot uh, lately is Hedron's Perla Glow. And what it is, they took... Uh, glow-in-the-dark flash boot and pearl flash boot and they blended it and my favorite thing about it fluoresces fluoresces amazingly which I'm up in the Northwoods um, and something that I have a lot up here is tannic water and so that fluorescence that chartreuse flore fluorescence is absolutely uh, magnificent for smallmouth bass so really fun product to use I just cut that whole hank in half here and I'm just gonna give that a good little taper I'm basically going to plop that sucker right on top here, spread that around my little thread dam that I have back there, 
wrap that up. I just, ooh, I got a crying baby. I'm gonna fold this back down either side, lock that back. I'll actually flip this over and match my thread on the bottom here so I don't go too far back. And I got one loose strand there. So that is our tail, just bucktail flash, simple two-step tail there. And I'm gonna go get my kid real quick. <laughs> this is that little noisemaker going on upstairs. This is Hezekiah. What's up, little dude? I forget how old you are. He's like 11 weeks old. Who knows? He's like two and a half months. He's really mad. <laughs> Today he got all of his vaccinations. So he's gonna hang out with us while we tie this fly. <laughs> so it's like six hours later. My wife just got home to hand off. That baby is super crabby. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna come in. I have an EP Foxy brush and an EP Sparkle brush. Uh, that's white and holographic silver. Um, they're both the three inch versions. And I'm gonna come tag those guys right on the side and wrap that up to just behind the eyes. Um, and you could totally use the EP Craft Fur brushes um, instead of the EP Foxy brush, but because this is kind of a, a bulkhead clouser, I kind of wanted a little bit fatter, broader body on this one. And the Foxy brush just builds bulk a little bit better. So I'm going to take these, draw my fibers off to one side, so it's kind of like I have working with a hackle here. And I'm just going to wrap that one clean wrap right at the back. If you need to, you can always pick this out so it wraps a little bit smoother. And then we're going to walk it up. That's two. That's three. That's four. I'm actually going to get a fifth on there just so we kind of have a nice bulky collar. And so you can kind of see the first, you know, first three were, uh, well, the first one was a nice clean tight wrap, but they moved up kind of open spiral wrap. And then once I got to where I wanted my collar, there was two right on top of each other just to help build bulk right there. And I always trim this and leave a little wire tag right here that I'll smash down and then I'll tie over top of it so that those brushes are super duper locked in place. And I'm just going to come in with a brush here. <coughs> brush, comb, same difference, and comb that out. So the head on this fly is straight from my seasoned geezer, which was kind of the first one that I did it with. Um, and it's a, it's a basically a, well, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. It's a strung fuzzy fiber head over lead eyes, right? And, um, you know, strung fuzzy fiber is basically a wool replacement. You could totally do a wool head or a deer hair head, like a sex dungeon head, anything like that. But the whole point of this fly was basically to make a bulkhead clouser over the lead eyes. That way the fly is dimensionally sound. You have that profile from the side, from the top, from the bottom. You know, it's totally like a mullet shape, almost like a sculpin or a fat head or about it. And the thing about having that bulky head is it totally slows the drop rate. Totally slow. Like you could probably fish this for smallmouth, right? Um, and this would be a great guide style fly. Like it's basically a clouser with a flash brush. Like super simple teardrop silhouette, flash, tail. You could, you know, invert the hook with medium eyes and you're good to go. Um, but this bulkhead gives it three dimensionally sound silhouette. Also significantly slows the drop rate, which is really fun for me um, as someone who likes to run and gun streamers and and uh, especially fishing kind of low clear a little bit more finesse water that really subtle slow twitch jig is, re is really fun for me so I'm actually gonna switch up sorry that I went into story mode there for a little sec I'm gonna switch up to GSP uh, this is a 150 strand gel spun from Vivas um, I like working with it, uh, the strong fuzzy fiber better and the gel spun just because I can make a really nice bulkhead and get some really intense pressure on here and trim it to a very accurate shape. The, the, it, the <coughs> strong fuzzy fiber takes that 140 power thread that I started with basically to its limit as far as uh, durability and being able to work with it in a, a dubbing loop. So that's GSP. I'm going to come in with white strung fuzzy fiber. It's currently at its full length off the hank. I'm going to cut that in half. I'm going to cut it in half again so we have a quarter of our full length. 
This pack was actually a tad bit long, so I'm just going to trim that up. And then before I cut this into eighths, would be this this cut right here, I'm going to take Hairline's Ripple Ice Fiber and Chartreuse. I'm going to take a pretty uh, healthy amount here. And this, I love this. I love, look at, you can just see all that chartreuse accent within that strung fuzz. And I'm going to blend this stuff together in my hand here. Just rip stack it back and forth. Um, that way you can keep all your fibers aligned. Once you work it through, just comb out that real quick. So that's my Ripple Ice Strung Fuzzy Fiber Blend. And then I'll come and cut that. So that is not perfectly 50-50. I kind of have like a long side 60 and a short side 40. I'm going to put that into my dubbing loop. I'm going to do the long side first. And that's going to build our collar. And then I'm going to do the short side last, which is going to build our head. So this is going to be my collar. This is going to be my head. But what I like to do is the fibers closest to here. You like to do it really long. You can see how asymmetrical that is, like short fibers, long fibers. And as they move up, they also move over. So they're closer to 50-50. And then this whole head section is all 50-50. So I want to build a nice long collar, and I want it to get short. And then once I get to my short fibers, I want them all nice and dense right around the lead eyes. Um, yeah, you don't need to get too technical about how you distribute that. And working with the GSP is a lot more forgiving um, in terms of being able to over bulk the head and get away with it and then trim it down later. Um, with the power thread you couldn't really over bulk it and so you had to get it just right. So doing this with GSP is nice and simple. So that's spun up, combed out. I'm going to pull this stuff off to the side really aggressively here. Make a nice, super tight, strong fuzzy fiber hackle base, basically, and jam this stuff right behind this lead eye. We got a crying baby upstairs. <laughs> Try to get that whole collar behind that lead eye. So this is, I think, three turns, that full collar. And what's really nice about this GSP, I'm not, I have zero worry or fear about basically breaking this. I can really work that back in there and I don't have any worry whatsoever of breaking off my dubbing loop. Let's see, I'm gonna come in front. I usually like to come in front from the underside. It hides the threads a little bit better. But it didn't look like my spacing was gonna work out that way. And then one last <coughs> selling point for the GSP. When you get to the hook eye, it's my favorite way to do this. So I have this up. I'm going to catch this with my thread. I'm actually going to catch it twice just for the sake of doing it. And as I'm pulling up with this, I'm going to pull down with my bobbin and use the two to leverage off each other. And it puts so much pressure on that dubbing loop and it'll suck it right behind that hook eye. So you don't have to worry about crowding the head with this dubbing loop. Because that GSP, you can put, I think, probably, it's 150. I think that might be like 6 pounds. You can put so much pressure on that and suck it right behind that hook eye. You have a nice, clean eye. You didn't trap anything down. You don't. You didn't crowd anything. You're not, you're, you know, you're going to be able to get in there. So I'll show you guys the color combo when we're all said and done. I know the fly is overexposed here, but that's just how it is. So I always hit my, my uh, whip finish knot with some zappa gap and then I'll take a bodkin and work it through that eye and make sure it's always cleaned out and shove my threads back so I have a nice perfectly open perfectly open hook eye for my tippet. Comb this out. And then like trimming anything it's just one of those things that you gotta practice and get used to but I do the bottom pretty tight. Contour the eyes going up the sides and then round out the head. And so you can see first thing I'm doing right here, this is something I always see people do, they'll round out their head nice. You see the angle on my scissors is very uh, up and then they leave this stuff way too long and way too bulky. Once you get up here you can totally cut this back like 
you just need that front slope angle to get all of that uh, water push and hydraulic. Like you want that front angle nice and aggressive and bulky. But you don't necessarily need the top of it super bulky. You always want to trim down that collar. That's what I do on the, the season geezers. And so you can see I'm like way back here in my collar and I'll like lift up that strong fuzz, cut it back. And then the final step for this fly, totally optional, I just think it looks nice. Um, come in here, this is a chart pack marker in black. And I'm just going to rub this into the head of this fly. And what I like to do anytime I'm hitting marker on just about anything. But when you work that in there, you really want to rub it and soak it and work it into those fibers. And that'll help that to set and not bleed and fade away and do anything. But that's going to give us our nice counter shading, kind of dark head contrast right over the top of those lead eyes. And then you could bar it. That might look cool, but I'm not going to do it. You could totally bar it. <laughs> That's the slow jig clouser, right? Um, super simple, you know, just a bucktail tail. And it's all about durability, it's all about not following, all about keeping that fly in the water, being able to work it, not having to bring it in to adjust anything or fix anything. Um, the double brush body, it's gonna give you that perfect teardrop taper with your bucktail. Super simple, run it up, two brushes, it was six turns, it might've been five turns, I don't remember. Go back and look, five or six turns, two right at the head, build a nice bulk, you got flash throughout the entire, there's flash throughout this entire fly. There's flash in the head, flash in the body, flash in the tail. Everything is perfectly kind of reflective, shimmery, light, there's nothing that's uh, overly accented over the other, but it's very symmetrically throughout the entire fly. Um, and then you have this 3D, realistic, accurate head paired with those light, small lead eyes. And you're gonna get this very supple, light jig fly that you can jerk strip, run and gun, smack the banks in a low and clear scenario and finesse fish a super light fluttering pattern on a floating line. Super perfect for weight fishing. So that's the slow jig clouser. Uh, thanks for watching. I'd recommend tying one up and giving it a try. And again, you can totally swap out tails for whatever floats your boat. If you're fishing a lake, you might want a little more movement. Uh, switch it up to marabou, ostrich, rabbit zonkers, arctic fox, craft fur. It's all, it's all fair game. I just, I love that the bucktail's always fishing and it never is following. And that was just my go-to. So check it out. Thanks for watching and give it a try. See ya.